At Los Alamos, birthplace of the atomic bomb, dramatic clues to the mystery of ball lightning have been found by James Tuck. Hi, Mr. Tuck. How are you? How are you? Hi. A little cold. Professor out. Tuck has distilled its characteristics from eyewitness reports. This ball, very characteristically, floats through the air like this. The ball, on the average, is about a foot in diameter. Sometimes there are people who say they've seen it a meter, a yard in diameter, and there are some people who claim they've seen it about the size of a walnut. It's uh, not very bright, about the brightness of a hundred watt lamp. Now that's pretty bright at night, remember, but in the daytime it's nothing special. It's said to make a fizzing, buzzing noise. Uh, it lasts on the whole, on the average, about five seconds. Stories from the U.S. Navy submarine service put Tuck on to an experiment. Submariners told him how clumsy switching of the batteries could produce fireballs which often burnt their legs. At Los Alamos, Tuck persuaded some colleagues to help him in the lunch hour to try to manufacture ball lightning. For on the very premises where he had helped build the atomic bomb, Tuck had discovered they had a gigantic submarine battery, as big as a power station, but now redundant. One day, the last before the battery was due to be dismantled, they decided to surround the switchgear with a small concentration of methane gas. Well, we set up this experiment with a cellophane box around the switchgear, and, uh, did, and we were all behind the sandbags about a hundred well, 50 feet away from the switchgear, we had the cameras rolling, we took the picture. And I made a bit of a blunder, a small mistake about the r right gas concentration in this box, with the result that instead of the gas merely serving as some kind of component in the, any future ball lightning that we hope to make, the warming by the arc caused it to explode in a mild way. Now, the arc itself makes a big noise, but what, but what happened was the whole thing went warumph like this, but lifted the roof a little, and we were all staring at this with our jaws dropped round our ankles in horror. Well, then that was the experiment, and that was over, and we did a little illegal champagne drinking and said, well, it was a good try, but we didn't succeed, folks. And that was that. The colour film of this kind has to be processed out elsewhere, and when it came back from the lab and we examined the last film, to our profound astonishment, there was a, an object on it. We could see the explosion and so on, but there was an object which came along towards us, bounced on the floor, went off the, f off the frame. It, uh, it had a diameter of about 10, say, 3 inches in diameter. It was on 150 frames of, of the film. Both cameras showed it, went behind something and came out again on the other side. It floated. It didn't fade. It kept the same brightness. I must say that, if, if, uh, that it had a lot of characteristics of ball lightning. Can I say as a scientist that we sure had made ball lightning? I'm afraid not. Because an honest scientist must repeat it over and over and find the conditions for when it does it and when it doesn't. But this was an ex post facto affair. We couldn't repeat it. So all I can say is I think, if I were on asked honestly, had we made ball lightning, I would say of the 50-50 chance we had. Ball lightning involves matter at very high temperatures, the so-called plasma state found in the cosmic furnaces of the stars. Through its study, we may be able to create here on Earth sources of infinite power, and then our energy problems.